In this video, we're going to take a look at linear approximations. So in our study of the derivative so far, we frequently refer to the tangent line to the curve at a point. Now, if p is a point of differentiability for a function, and we zoom in or magnify the point p, the curve segment that contains the p will look more and more like the tangent line. Functions that are differentiable at a point are said to be locally linear. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in a little bit on a graph. So to explore this, let's take a look at f of x equals x squared. So I want to show that the tangent line to the graph of f at the point 1, 1 is equal to, um, is y equal to 2x minus 1. So we're going to take the derivative of f of x. It's going to be 2x. I want to find the slope at the point 1. So we have 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. So I'm going to write the tangent line. Remember, it's y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. So I'm going to plug in the point 1. My slope is 2. And my x value, oops, my x naught is also 1. So when I simplify, I will get 2x minus 1 which is what I wanted to show. Now, if I set y1 equal to x squared, and then I set y2 equal to 2x minus y, and I zoom into the graphs, you'll notice something. So let's take a look at decimals here. So here I have my parabola in red, and I have my tangent line in blue at the point 1, 1. So as we zoom in more and more, the point is saying that as I get closer and closer, it looks like the red graph, which is my parabola, actually looks like the tangent line. So if you zoom in a lot, you almost can't even tell the difference between the parabola and the tangent line. So I'm just going to draw a little quick graph. So the parabola and the tangent line at 1, 1, the two graphs end up looking the same. So this leads us to using this concept um, to use to do linear approximation. So the idea is that is that um, it, it oops I have a typo here. So the idea is that it may be easy to calculate a value of a function, but it's difficult to compute nearby values of f. So we're going to use um, linear approximation to easily compute values of the linear function l, whose graph is a tangent line of f at a f of a. Hence, if f is differentiable at a, then the tangent line through that point closely approximates the graph, y equals, of f, y equals f of x for values of x near a. Now this is a mouthful, so let me draw this pictorially. So let's say that we have this curve, and we have this point here, and this point is a, f of a. And then let's say that we want to know what this point here is, x. Okay, so what we can do is I'm going to draw a tangent line. Oh, actually, sorry, this is x. And then this point over here, its corresponding y value will be f of x. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a tangent line at a okay and then I'm going to state that this distance here is very small so the distance from the curve or f of x to sorry or y equals f of x to this point is a very small number so that I can calculate what this is. Now how do we find out what this point is here? Okay, so what we can do is notice that the tangent line, the red line, through the point a, f of a, we're going to say that it has a slope f prime of a because we're trying to find the slope right at the single point. So then we're going to use the point slope form to write the equation, sorry, to write the equation of the tangent line. So we're going to write y minus f of a equals to 
f prime of a times x minus a. So that would be using the red line to write the equation of the tangent line. So y is equal to f prime of a times x minus a. Actually, I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to put this as y equals, and then f of a, and then plus. So I'm going to squeeze this in the front of the f prime of a times x minus a. So where, are the, where is the point y and x? So since y and x are points on the tangent line, that would be any point on the tangent line here. So since I already know where x is, this is x here, if I follow this all the way up, the point y, so since this is point x, the point y would be right over here. So we would say the y value at that point would be f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So we can actually rewrite this as Oh, actually, sorry, this was actually what this point here was. All right, now this is quite um, useful and it's quite common. So we call this the linear approximation or the tangent line approximation of f at a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this equation here and I'm going to rewrite this as f of x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. Sometimes you might see books and they'll write f of x and they'll say linear approximation, so they'll write l of x equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So this is the linear function whose graph is the tangent line. And we would say that this is called the linearization of f at a. So how do we use this? So for example, let's say that I want to find the linear approximation of f of x equal to 1 plus x at the point a equals 0. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I want to find the derivative. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 plus x to the power of a half. Now if you're kind of wondering what this looks like, uh, we have a radical graph and this remember is x plus 1 so it actually starts at negative 1 and then it's going to go off to the right so what's happening is is asking what is that value at an x naught of 0 okay so we're going to find the derivative and that will be a half 1 plus x to the negative a half and then we want to find out what that slope is at 0 so we're going to have 1 over 2, and I'm going to put that in the denominator so they don't have a negative exponent. So then I have 1 plus 0, which actually gives me a slope of a half. So that means that the linear approximation, so f of a is f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x minus 0. So L of x and f of 0, we can see that from here, if I plug in the number 0 into my function, I get the square root of 1 plus a half times x. So the linear function is equal to x over 2 plus 1. So that means that at this point, if I draw my tangent line here, I can actually get a linear approximation of any point close to 0 to be x over 2 plus 1. So actually, let's try this. So we're going to use that linear approximation that we just obtained from part A to approximate these numbers. So let's say what's, check out what 1.3 is. So the square root of 1.3 is 1 plus 0 point, oops, 1 plus 0.3. So therefore, I can say that my x value is 0.3. Now, why did I choose this? Because I'm using this f of x equals square root of 1 plus x as my linear approximation, and that's my function. Um, I want to make my radical so that I have the 1 plus. So in this case, it's 1 plus 0.3. Therefore, x must be 0.3.
So now I'm going to calculate what f of 0.3 is, or you can say that what's L of 0 0.3. So this would be 0 0.3 over 2 plus 1. So without even using a calculator, I can say that 0 0.3 divided by 2 is 0.15, and then 0.15 plus 1 is 1.15. And if I go to my calculator and check out the square root of 1.3, I can see that is actually 1.14. So my estimation, my approximation, 1.15 is really close. Let's try one more. So I can say that the square root of 1 is 1 plus 0 0.05. Therefore, my x value is 0 0.05. So my linear approximation is going to be 0 0.05 divided by 2 plus 1. So 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025. And then when I add 1 is 1 point. 0.025. So let's go to my calculator and let's calculate that. So I'm going to square root 1.05 and I find out it's 1.025. Wow, it's actually the same. So the linear approximation is a really valuable tool um, to find um, the y value of given the x value.